record. Okay, so everyone, good morning, everyone. Um, I am Annika ostegren and I, uh, me and Jakub, uh, we work for the European Commission and uh, we are uh, coordinating Code Week from the Commission side. Uh, we are very happy to have you here at this webinar um, and I am trying very much to uh, admit everyone in to the meeting room. Um, uh, I hope, uh, we both hope you're very well where you are uh, in whatever country um, and we thought, we felt it would be useful to share some best practices on online uh, teaching, uh, etc. because that's something all teachers and uh, also uh, are struggling with in the different uh, countries. So we will have a very informal type of webinar. We will start with Alessandro Bolliolo, who is uh, the coordinator of the EU Code Week Ambassadors. Uh, and then we will have the French ambassador. Oops, okay, so everyone can mute themselves except uh, me. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, after this short introduction. Okay. Okay, sorry, I will mute everyone. Oops, okay. And I will continue speaking. Um, we will listen to Alessandro Bolliolo, who is the uh, EU Code Week Ambassador Coordinator. He will share a lot of ex his experience and lots of tips. And then we have Deborah, who is the um, uh, Code Week Ambassador, one of them from France. Uh, and then we have Francisco, who is a leading teacher from Spain, who will share uh, a lesson on karate and, and coding. Um, Jakub, I will give you can, if you want to add something, please go ahead. I think, Anika, you mentioned everything. I will try to keep an eye on the chat. Uh, so if you have some questions, I will try to collect that. So feel free to use that. And just a reminder, you can also see it on your screens that uh, we are recording the webinar. So in case you yep. want to rewatch it afterwards or, or you have colleagues or friends or, or, or uh, people who want to see uh, what we have discussed, this will be made available as soon as we figure out how to upload it on YouTube or, or how we spread it, uh, then we will make it available for the whole community. And uh, thanks, Anika, I think that's it. Yeah, okay, welcome uh, everyone who has just joined the last minute. Uh, we're gonna start now. Um, so Alessandro, we will start with you and everyone else could keep their cameras off and microphones off, please. Alessandro, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here uh, with uh, so many of you. And I'm uh, very proud uh, also to share experience uh, on uh, distance uh, learning, distance teaching and coding uh, from uh, home, unfortunately, at this time. As you probably know, in Italy, we are experiencing a very tough situation uh, and uh, even the complete lockdown uh, is something that uh, is uh, incredibly strange and uh, scaring uh, to some extent uh, and uh, we have been uh, asked to come out uh, with new solution and with massive uh, distance learning uh, in order to cope uh, with the closure of all uh, schools. Uh, in many regions in Italy schools uh, have been closed for uh, three weeks uh, already and uh, we don't know when schools uh, will be open again. So it's uh, very, very difficult to keep uh, doing uh, teaching uh, in this situation. Uh, and uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, all the online uh, instruments and tools that many schools were prepared to use uh, have right now become mainstream technologies, which is uh, something incredibly uh, strange for uh, Italy and for many schools uh, in which uh, distance learning and online activities uh, were just uh, something uh, to be experienced by a few of the teachers uh, and for uh, just a limited amount of time and activities. So uh, what I'd like to share are uh, general tips uh, that I, I think that uh, are based on uh, experience that here in Italy we have uh, we had uh, in these uh, three weeks 
And uh, let me start from these before uh, moving to coding uh, specifically. So uh, first of all, it is very, very important to stay in touch with pupils. So I think that uh, uh, teachers can make a difference uh, even just uh, by uh, finding any possible way of staying in touch with the pupils. Second, uh, um, I think that uh, you are uh, uh, invited uh, as teachers uh, to uh, possibly use uh, any form of online tools in order to be in touch with pupils, uh, even if your school uh, has uh, no specific tools uh, and no uh, environments and no platforms uh, Hello? ready set up. Third, I suggest to make uh, as much as possible the use of existing resources, existing online resources, and to select those that are valuable uh, for uh, your teaching activities uh, in order to be proposed to your pupils uh, and students that can possibly follow them uh, individually. I also uh, strongly suggest to make use of cloud tools in order to avoid overloads and to avoid the technical issues that usually come out uh, with uh, I would say custom tools that uh, need to be used more intensively and extensively than they were supposed to when you built them. So uh, any kind of uh, online tools and cloud resources that can be used for uh, meetings like the one that we are using right now are uh, much more reliable than uh, any tool that you can install in your own servers within your school or at home. Then I also uh, invite uh, teachers uh, to uh, try to respect as much as possible in case of your school uh, are closed, uh, the schedule, the timetable, in order to um, provide to uh, your pupils uh, and to their families some kind of rule and uh, management of time that is as similar as possible uh, to the school experience. And it is also very important to avoid uh, overstimulating uh, pupils and families because uh, if uh, uh, every teacher is um, responsible uh, of uh, filling up all their time, families uh, become confused of the many stimuli they, they receive, and it is very difficult for them to try to organize the activities of their, uh, of their kids. And uh, coming uh, on uh, the aspects more related with coding, uh, I think that coding uh, is uh, a fantastic activity to be proposed uh, at home, just because it is uh, so intuitive and rewarding uh, as uh, many teachers uh, know very well that even families uh, can be able to assist uh, their pupils and uh, kids in uh, doing coding activities. And I recommend to make uh, coding as amusable as possible and to um, do some kind of gamification, uh, which is very natural when speaking about coding and doing coding activities by proposing possibly some games based on coding to be played with their families. And uh, this is something that can be done uh, at any age. And uh, I, I try to propose daily uh, coding activities to families that are based on do-it-yourself uh, Tools. So avoiding any kind uh, of uh, technical uh, requirement, uh, uh, possibly making use of unplugged activities as much as possible, but even uh, in the range of unplugged activities, trying to focus on uh, activities that can be prepared by themselves uh, without uh, any uh, prerequisite. So uh, in particular, in Italy, um, I 
just to mention uh, one of the initiatives that I'm uh, carrying on in Italy, uh, because uh, it is very uh, easy to replicate uh, in case uh, you think it's valuable, which are very short uh, videos uh, that I upload on YouTube and then on Facebook, uh, which are uh, called Coding in Familia, which is uh, literally coding at home with your family. Uh, in which I propose uh, a coding, uh, um, an unplugged coding game uh, to be played uh, every day. Uh, they last for 10 to 15 minutes, uh, uh, and uh, they have been uh, also taken by the Italian television, which uh, is providing very valuable uh, resources to schools, uh, and they have been uh, inserted uh, within these resources. Uh, and so every day I just uh, provide these uh, short videos uh, and you can uh, take them as you, as you wish uh, as examples uh, and then uh, in case uh, you think it's worth, uh, you can just uh, propose something similar or something completely different, but I think that it is very useful for our uh, community to stay in touch with families and teachers uh, and to uh, propose to make use of coding uh, as a, another and very effective way of doing something together while uh, building something together for better periods. Thank you very much. Alessandro, thank you very much for all the tips. I think this was great. I, I am uh, stepping in because I see that we have a question which I think is very relevant. Um, uh, Miguela from Portugal, I guess, sent this question and she is or he is asking how to reach students with no internet or computer. She's of course yeah. challenging, but uh, I guess uh, Alessandro, you might want to follow. follow yes, yes, yes. This is a very, <laughs> a very tough question because uh, um, it is very difficult to get in touch uh, with uh, everyone because uh, the situation is so diverse. And I think that uh, national television can make a difference. Uh, and uh, even uh, radios can be of, uh, of help. So in case of emergency, like the one that we are experiencing, uh, I think that all the media can uh, be of help and very also um, willing to be of help. So for instance, the national television in Italy uh, took just one day to accept the proposal of uh, making available all the resources that we are generating every day. And uh, even universities can be of help because many universities, uh, in particular for uh, high schools, uh, have many uh, valuable courses that can be made available for free and online. And uh, most of the universities are very, very well equipped uh, with distance learning and online learning facilities. So our university, for instance, uh, is uh, running MOOCs, uh, as you probably know. And those MOOCs uh, are now available and included within the resources that the Italian government make available uh, to schools. So I think that uh, it is um, worth uh, going through the national uh, governments uh, to try to engage televisions and radios in order to use broadcasting when internet connections are not available. I saw uh, one of the comments uh, was also that they send pa uh, paper. I saw one uh, person commenting that they send papers to uh, their students. I guess that's also an idea with exercises. Yeah, that's a, that's a great uh, thing to do uh, in case uh, they are able to reach them out. And, and maybe one, um, one more question that I see now uh, from Madhu Malti. Uh, is about mm. using tools such as WhatsApp uh, or Messenger. Uh, is that something that you would see uh, as an option? For example, that a teacher has a, a WhatsApp group with his students or with her students, and uh, they, they do activities together via WhatsApp. 
Yes, WhatsApp is uh, used a lot. In general, WhatsApp is used in particular to uh, decide what to do, not uh, really to do things in WhatsApp. Uh, for instance, uh, if uh, teachers uh, use uh, um, online tools that are uh, not uh, included within a platform made available by the school and managed by the school, then WhatsApp is used to provide links uh, and timetables uh, or to decide at which time to meet online uh, in, uh, on some other platform. But WhatsApp can be effectively used also to share uh, homeworks uh, or links uh, to online resources of any kind. So WhatsApp groups uh, are for sure a very valuable tool. Yeah, then Google okay. Classroom. Okay, so are there any yes. other? Uh, um, both Google and Microsoft uh, are making available to schools for free uh, all their uh, educational uh, facilities that are very, very useful. But it is uh, uh, not so easy for schools uh, to organize in such a way that all the teachers can make use of them. I also okay. see that um, someone someone connect, uh, commented that uh, if kids or, or students don't have internet, they can be also reached via mobile cell phones or even landlines eventually, I guess. Uh, it's another way. Of course, it makes it a little bit more difficult. Yeah. And I see that uh, uh, someone is, uh, Cristoval, or that they are saying that there are some coding platforms for kids. Uh, he mentions code.org, but of course we have a lot of resources on the uh, CodeWeek EU website. Awesome. So, so this is just a reminder, go there. Many of the resources are translated in local languages, in your languages. There is also a guide for teachers what to do, what activities to do. Of course, these are very often more for in-class uh, in class activities, but I guess you are very creative and you can find a way how to do this also with yeah, I'm sharing in, um, in the chat uh, the link uh, to the short videos that I mentioned. Okay, good. Do we have any more questions for Alessandro specifically? Okay, he will of course stay online, um, but maybe we could proceed to the next presentation with Deborah. Yes, hello. Hi, Deborah. So, uh, welcome. Uh, I give the floor to you. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, uh, I uh, wanted to share uh, my uh, my screen uh, and just wanted to check uh, it work. Can you see it by any chance? Um, I don't see it, Jakub. Do you see? No, 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 not yet, not yet. Okay. Uh, oops. Now we see okay, it. Now. Yes. Yeah. Is it uh, yes. the code, the code? Uh, it says avis de marché. Oh no, so oh, that's I don't think right. it's the right, it's not the right one. <laughs> uh, so wrong one. Uh, avis de marché, yes. Uh, okay, so I'll keep this one and just um oops, sorry uh oops. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll uh, try once more and uh, now we have it. Okay. Code the code it says now. Yep. Yes. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, share one experience which we have at the moment. Uh, you were talking on the uh, during Alessandro's uh, on uh, about uh, resources. There are indeed plenty of resources on. Um, on Code Week uh, platform, uh, and uh, we are now intensively, uh, or 
our resource code, code decode is intensively being used by um, by pupils. Uh, it exists so far in English and French, and I just wanted to share a few things that might be put at the disposal of the Code Week uh, ambassadors. Uh, the the principle was to uh, propose uh, an online autonomous path that can be followed by educators. I agree with Ale Alessandro about the importance of maintaining a contact, uh, both having some educational experiences that can be done in an autonomous way on the computer by families and pupils, and at the same time where the educator, uh, the teacher can follow uh, what's, being, uh, what's being made progressively and uh, follow objectives. Uh, so the principle, uh, which is uh, the, the part which is now being used uh, intensively uh, since this week, uh, more intensively than usually, are these, uh, we have uh, Code Decode provides guiding, uh, guided path, uh, where step by step, uh, it's possible for uh, youth uh, to, to follow a step-by-step uh, -step educational path, mixing both coding and, and digital culture and uh, covering a lot of different subjects from AI from, from, and uh, artificial intelligence to uh, producing uh, uh, their own game to understanding data, both through making experiences, creation, and, uh, and critical thinking. So just to show you a little bit how it works, I um, propose to, to show one example of how it can be used uh, on one subject uh, among others uh, about creating a, uh, our own video games. So we, we, we were used as a lot of you uh, to use a lot of different tools uh, uh, to, 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 to do that. Here, what we uh, try to do is provide uh, one uh, guided online path which enables uh, children or teenagers to be fully autonomous. Uh, so first, we'll ask questions like this one. Do you recognize the games uh, in the images below? Usually, they do recognize, so they are uh, on trust. And they can uh, so, sometimes, according to teachers, we have some people who uh, use a, a platform on the side uh, so that they can exchange on uh, answers and so on. It's a very open way. Then we ask, how is a video uh, game created? We have uh, some uh, uh, resources that are um, uh, that can be linear. Can you see the video? Yes, we see the video. Yes. How many elves do you need to create a video game? <laughs> Fellow gamers, elves have never created a video game. First of all, because they're too small, and secondly, because elves don't even exist. So it's up to us humans to do the job. A bit of ancient history. 50 years ago, a computer weighed five times more than a scooter. A game had two colors, and only one engineer was needed to create it. Today, computers have become more powerful, and lucky for us, much lighter. They're also more complicated. Today, hundreds of people spend several years creating a video game. Script writers, game and level designers, programmers, graphic artists, sound designers, testers, project leaders, up to a thousand humans can work on a single game. Claire is a game designer, a bit like an architect. So I'll, I'll stop there. Uh, just so we have moments that are just linear cartoons or videos to discover jobs, to discover how it works, to discover behind the screens. And then uh, uh, we ask generally questions about what they understood and how uh, uh, they do it. And then we jump into making your own, uh, your own game with a very guided path with step-by-step -step instructions, which enables both to do it in class, uh, which is not the case actually, or uh, in a very autonomous way, each youth doing it on, uh, on his side or each family 
and then being followed by the platform uh, online. So it enables, according to the ages of the youth, to have either visual uh, writing or directly in JavaScript or, or, or other writing. And so we alternate uh, making, creating, and deciphering uh, the digital world uh, and uh, uh, have uh, once uh, kids created their own game, we usually ask them, uh, teach them uh, a few things about game design and how to put a bit of thrill in the game. Uh, same thing using cartoons, videos of experts, and uh, apps to make their own uh, their own thing. And there's a and then we finish each fair with what did we learn. Uh, and these uh, paths are can be can be used by any educator in a very guided way, or any uh, structure building their own course can modify the 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 online pa path in order to create their own and to 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 to, to, to create their branded one. And then I showed one example on one thematics, which was video games, but we have a lot of different uh, themes that can be covered uh, the same way. So which includes pedagogical paths that can be used in a totally autonomous way on, on one hand. Uh, uh, second, which are uh, apps for coding activities, which can do uh, from games to uh, uh, very simple uh, interactive uh, features from pixel art and that can be shared on the community platform. And we have uh, 40 videos that can be shared today existing in French and English, uh, but we could subtitle uh, uh, most of them uh, to, uh, to also have specific themes that are discovered as I showed you on video games. And we are at the moment producing because uh, some of we were asked to do a few online assessments so that uh, youth can uh, and, and families can uh, uh, check where they are after a path and share it with a, a distant uh, teacher. I just wanted to, to, to show you uh, these resources because uh, we found out that it, it answered uh, uh, in the special actual context uh, that uh, uh, very different people were using it for different purpose and we are of course uh, ready to open it to any uh, member that might be interested. Hello. <laughs> so, are there any questions for Deborah? Uh, Jakub, I have not been able to look at the chat. Yes, I was, uh, I was following the chat. Basically, I think it was a nice video and very interesting. I shared also the link to the Code Decode website where, where the resources are there and the, the, the videos. Um, and uh, so far, I think people were just uh, following and, and, and looking for how this, these coding paths uh, could work and people are saying great resources. So thank you. Thanks Deborah for uh, a very nice presentation and, uh, and I hope uh, many people will find it useful. Uh, so if uh, there are no questions at the moment, we can go to Francisco Javier Macero Suarez. Uh, Hi, so maybe uh, Deborah, you can stop sharing your screen oh, and yes, then I will share my screen or if you want to share do you want to share it yourself Francisco yeah I I want to share my oh. I think you can share your screen otherwise I will I have your presentation so I can share mine but I think maybe Deborah needs to uh, stop I'm trying, sharing uh, I'm, uh, <laughs> I think you have it on the maybe on the bottom uh, menu no, I actually think it's on the top. On the, I, I, on the top? Me myself, I have it at the very top, and it says always stop sharing on the top screen. I lost my top. menu, but uh, sorry, modify it. Uh, well, Annika, uh, maybe can I can stop it. you. Yes, yeah, yeah, I can probably force uh, it. Uh, there, I did it. Yeah, I, I, I found it. Good. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so let's try. Uh, Ivona, if you could turn off your microphone, please. 
and um, Deborah as well. <laughs> I, there's so many people now. Uh, here, I can do it for you. Stop video. Okay. And then we ask, I would ask Francisco to go on. Well, Annika, when... Okay, perfect, perfect. Can you perfect. share your screen or shall I do you, it for you? Can you hear me? Good? Yes, very well. Thank you. Well, well, hello everybody. I'm Francisco from Spain and I'm going to share my presentation. Perfect, yes. Well, uh, I'm going to show you my presentation called uh, Karate and Coding. Uh, first of all, uh, I need to explain what is our situation in Spain. Uh, nowadays, it's dramatic. Uh, we have reached 833 deaths and more than 18,000 infected. Spain is in a state of alarm. Uh, nobody can stay in the street. Schools and high schools and all educational centers are closed and teachers and students are at home. Uh, this situation requires uh, a change in methodology because we can't teach face-to-face uh, and we need to teach using e-learning. Uh, in the first week uh, after the state of alarm, we have had uh, many uh, problems in the implementation of this methodology. Uh, teachers have uh, sent many tasks and activities have had uh, a lot of theory and have been few practical. In addition, uh, families are worried by the situation. Uh, to stay all the day at home, um, people are suffering uh, physical and emotional problems. Uh, finally, it's necessary that students uh, do physical activities to combat uh, the sedentary lifestyle. Well, I am working as an ECT advisor, but I am a physical education teacher too. Uh, we have created a Telegram group to speak about PE homework and to share uh, resources and good practices. We have decided uh, four rules that every teacher must follow. Uh, the first uh, activities need more to be more practical, including physical activity. The second, uh, we need to use ECT, like video presentation, coding. Uh, third, uh, these activities are done without uh, the presence of the teacher, and they need to be uh, easy to learn and with a low uh, risk of injury. It's very, very important. And the last, uh, integrated learning with other subjects. If it's possible, we need to integrate contexts of uh, language, uh, math, technology. Well, I'm going to present our activity. It's called Karateka Project. Um, students need to learn a kata called Heian Sodan. It's a, an easy kata, but what's a kata? A kata is a sequence of movements organized by uh, a pattern prescribed for defending uh, or oneself uh, against several attackers. Um, you need uh, to do this activity, you need to follow three steps. Uh, watch a video of the kata, code the movement with scratch, and prepare the kata at home and record it on video. But it's better to, to see what's a kata. Francisco, I think we can see it, however. I think uh, the, link, the link didn't open. No, sorry. You can see the, the video or not? No, no, no. We just see the presentation. We cannot see the link. 
Oh, I mean, we don't see the video. You need to switch. I think you need to switch the screen uh, the, that you are sharing, the, the window that you are sharing. If you, you want, uh, if you can't, uh, I can show the, the link. Yes, yeah, like, this, like this, like this. Yeah. I'm going I to share. I share the, the link in the chat. Yeah, and I'm going chat. to share the whole presentation because Francisco sent the presentation. So I'm going to just uh, share it in a few minutes in the chat. Okay. The link is in the chat, in the chat. Right. Everybody can see this and I follow with the presentation. Well, uh, the first part is to, to watch the video. It's a, a simple kata, it's a, the, the easier kata in karate. And the second is to code the movement with scratch. It's a, a technology, a, a technology activity. Can you you see the this screen? No, no, no. <clears throat> I think once you, uh, uh, Francisco, I think once you click on the link, you need to go to the share screen options and choose another window that will be shared with everyone. Yeah, yeah. I want to share you the screen. Can you share the project? Yes, now we see it. Now we see it. Now yeah. we see it. Yes. 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 No, this is scratch. This is scratch. Is the the kata made by the scratch, uh, and it's the second activity in this project. It's very easy to to do because it's uh, a sequence of images, as uh, sprites, and you need to copy and reproduce all the the kata. You can put the sounds and it's all the, the sequence. And it's very good for students because they can um, now all the movements and um, copy all the sequence. Well, I continue with the presentation. Can you see the presentation? Yes, we see it. Yeah. Yes, yep. Well, uh, to do this activity, we provide the students uh, a toolkit with instructions to do the, the activity, the video link of the kata, and a zip file with images to make a kata sprite. All uh, many images that uh, students can copy and paste in scratch and it's very easy to to do this this activity uh, to define uh, or to do the all the kata we need to define uh, different movements like greetings for example the first part is to do to tell uh, hey and so on to say hey and so on uh, and uh, we need to uh, do different sequence like a block uh, punch is, is called Gedan Barain or Ansuki. And uh, students need to do all the, the codifications, all the coding of this uh, uh, movement. And how to create the kata? It's very simple. Uh, I need, uh, or we need to, to move a karateka across the map with a sprite. And we need uh, to use loops. And finally, uh, we need to define time intervals in movement. Uh, if uh, the first part is uh, uh, with uh, three seconds or five seconds of uh, duration of length. And in conclusion, uh, coding and sport is an excellent way to perform, <coughs> sorry, an <coughs> integrated activity because uh, allow to develop cognitive and physical activities in the same project. Uh, very important, helps improve uh, movement, sequence learning. Uh, when you are coding with a scratch, you are learning the order of movements 
and the steps you need to follow to do physically, the kata. After that, it's very easy to remember all the kata. And finally, it uh, shows a different vision of how to teach PE and technology in 11. And it's, it's all, that's all. Uh, if you can contact with me, you can contact with me by email, uh, Twitter, Facebook. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much, uh, Francisco. Really, you, really cool activity. Um, I love sports, as you all know. So uh, this is uh, just in my taste, the best of combination of all, right? Sports and the coding. Uh, any questions for Francisco, anyone? I saw in the, in the comments that many people were saying that their students will love it and that they will share it and that they will try the, the activity and they are thanking Francisco for this presentation. I think this is, this is indeed great because this is uh, something that, uh, that helps kids not only to learn at home, but indeed also a group of it. And if they involve the whole family, then I think it can work very well. Um, otherwise, no questions. Uh, like concrete questions, just uh, Gmedra Notik is sharing that uh, great job, Francisco. And I have done something in that line with dancing. So I think uh, also an upgrade if someone is not a fan of, uh, of karate or, or you know, uh, the, uh, these kind of things, dancing can definitely also work. And uh, uh, maybe we would be very much interested in if you develop something with your students. Feel free to share it. Uh, you can tweet uh, with code week hashtag. You can share it uh, on Facebook. We have the Facebook group for teachers. So if you are not yet members, I guess many of you already are, but if you are not, feel free to join that group on Facebook. It's called uh, Code Week Teachers or Teachers Code Week, something like that. And there you can also share all your uh, activities that you do with kids and students, and uh, you will be also able to see what others are doing. So it's a pretty, pretty good group. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and um, also if you have, uh, we can also we would also welcome blog posts on the on the blog. Then if you want to send small texts to us with the links to your activities, we are happy to do that uh, and to publish I, them there. Sorry, and I see Nair is uh, Nair Carrera, who is uh, our friend here in Brussels, is saying that it would be great to gather all these ideas in one single document. So that is definitely something that we should, Anika, probably explore how maybe yeah. to, to, to create. Maybe we will draft a, a blog post where we will put the summary after the webinar of with the hyperlinks and with the video and with, uh, with everything that we have discussed. Maybe that would be a, a good idea. Yeah. Yeah, we will do uh, such a document. So send uh, to us. We would also like to flag that we, as I said in the beginning, but not everyone was there, is that we will have uh, another webinar next week, most likely Tuesday afternoon. Uh, we will uh, post on, on Yammer uh, the timing. We don't want to spam you with emails, so we would, um, we would uh, encourage you to all join Yammer if you're leading teachers, edu coordinators, or ambassadors. If there are other teachers, uh, please follow us on the Facebook group, uh, on Facebook and on Twitter, where we will announce it as well. Um, and just you can also now protest and say that you want emails uh, in the chat. I prefer emails. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. Uh, maybe we'll do one more email <laughs> and then not spam you anymore. Okay. What I wanted to mention to all of those who joined a little bit uh, later is that we recorded this webinar. So we will figure out this afternoon where and how to pub uh, publish it. And then we will tweet the link or, or put it on Facebook in the group. So you will uh, eventually be able to watch again uh, the webinar and maybe select the parts that you are yeah, I also now take, uh, posted the, the link to the Facebook group for teachers in the chat, so you can, uh, you can join there. Uh, are there any questions? Um, any, any timing? Is this timing a good timing? Uh, is it okay to have a Tuesday afternoon, like at 2 o'clock, or would you prefer lunchtime? You may uh, speak <laughs> or write, I mean, in the chat, probably easiest. 2 p.m. 
One vote, two votes. Two votes. Not lunch not time. Lunchtime. Okay. Two p.m. I think two p.m. is okay. okay. We did it. We will do two p.m. It's today Brussels was, time. Yes. So. Today was eleven, so let's do it at two p.m. because some people might be more available in the afternoon or in the morning. So, and we see, uh, of course, if this uh, if, if the, the the feedback that we are getting is great, so maybe we can continue doing uh, such webinars to also, you know, I think this is also good because we share our situation with everyone uh, many people are locked in their houses or locked in their cities so like this we can at least connect and and uh, uh, and join the forces as the community as the COVID community to to cope with these restrictions okay yeah we will probably maybe we'll do it at three o'clock i see many people um saying three o'clock uh brussels time um so um, if three is better for most people, maybe we'll go for 3 p.m. Um, and we will send you in our next email and put it on Yammer, the link to where we will post the recording of this uh, video. We're probably on our YouTube channel, but we need to see that it works also. Okay, I think we will wrap up there. Uh, thank you super much for joining. Next, uh, on the next one, we will focus on Scratch. We have several uh, presentations on Scratch, but keep your ideas uh, coming because uh, we will would like to, if you're interested, to uh, organize these webinars uh, um, regularly. So maybe also on next Friday uh, at the same time. Okay, thank you everyone. Jakub, anything to add? No, thank you, Anika. It was great. Thank great you, time. all presenters. Very nice. And thanks and to stay safe uh, and healthy everywhere. And thanks to everyone who joined and, and thanks for the positive feedback. That's yeah, great. so the next webinar will be Tuesday at 3 p.m. Brussels time. I now wrote it also in the chat. Okay. Bye-bye, everyone.